everybody, and welcome to an absolutely incredible wild ride with Steve-O. We have the return of the legend, Tony Hawk, who last year I got together with to do a double wall ride, photos of which we both signed for charity. And I'm happy to announce that the signed photos of our double wall ride are back on sale once again 100 percent of the proceeds are going to charity to support tony hawk's foundation the skate park project and if you hurry up you got a good chance of getting one so go to stevo.com if you want one other than that what can i say calling this guy my friend is a major honor and this podcast was a really good time so let's get into it ladies and gentlemen tony hawk yeah, yeah, dude, the triumphant Woo! return. So, Hi, thank you. Yeah. You, guys, you guys have come a long way. We, we really have, dude. Um, you were our very first ever podcast guest. And I remember after recording that, I was like, dude, if ever a podcast goes that well, I'll be so stoked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just thought it was such a home run. And then like, we sent it to our podcast guy, and he was like, eh. <laughs> no way, really? He says, maybe you could let him talk a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and, That's uh, kind of frightening because I, I started a podcast with Jason Ellis. Right. Uh, Hawk versus Wolf. We have not released one yet. First one's out on May 24th. But, right. Um, I saw you posted about that with the. With you have Lizzie, Lizzie on there. But that's, and, and so that's how I feel about it. You know, I was like, dude, if we get this, right. this is where we start. Right. But I haven't had that feedback yet, so I'm, I worry. Yeah, well. <laughs> but, but then again, I do that, man. I, I, It's something that I've had to work on. I thought that podcasting was going to be like a cool way to promote tours, you know, like even like a revenue stream. Yeah. And I come to learn that it would help me like grow as a communicator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like much needed growth. That's like the safest version of what you could say, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to do a podcast? Um, I honestly, it was it was stuff like this. I like I know that uh, I was doing Sirius XM show for fifteen years. You loved it, and and I got. I, it's funny. I had this conversation with Jason yesterday, Jason Ellis, because mm -hmm. I feel like he and I both got way better at being interviewers as. Sirius XM got lower, <laughs> got less interested in us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we were all, we were on this trajectory and we were just getting buried. And I mean, you know, they I understand they've got a ton of other shows, but I felt like, oh man, my last few guests, I had Seth Rogen, I had Pharrell, you know, and, and they were good interviews as far as I was concerned. And so Jason's like, yeah, man, same. I was like, yeah. let's just do something. Let's bring it back. Cause he and I started on Sirius together. Right. Uh, and so I feel like between us, we have a lot of stories. Dude, Jason's got... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> right? I think so. Jason His has... His stories veer more towards your, <laughs> your antics, <laughs> but we balance each other out. For sure. And, and I mean, I, that's something I would always notice when I was on tour. Like, oh, dude, when are you going to go on, you know, Ellis Radio again? Like, I, I noticed that his, his fan base is really rabid they're they're really into him yeah and he brings his, he, obviously he brings his fan base that he had on sirius xm and to his podcast um and then hopefully i bring mine as well and uh we've done a few already and i feel like they went they you know they were funny i mean definitely yeah. i was entertained mm -hmm. i remember you telling me about the accident that lizzie had yeah so i didn't realize it was quite as grave as it sounded in that that post yeah so that came about um, I told her early on, not early, you know, as when she was in recovery, I just said, Hey, if you ever want to tell your story, I'd be happy to be the one to talk to you about it <clears throat> in any form, however we do it. And then we started the podcast and I told her that, and then out of the blue, she called me and she said, I think I'm ready to tell my story. Cause Crazy. that happened back in October. She had a heavy, I don't know when. You guys and for anybody out, who but, doesn't know who Lizzie is, she's a professional skateboarder. She rides for your company birdhouse yeah. and she's really like among the biggest names in, in women's skateboarding. Yeah, absolutely. She's, uh, <laughs> she's one of the most popular female skaters, uh, really successful competitor. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best. And she had this, traumatic crash in October um, at Elliot Sloan's mega ramp right um, so basically she she went kind of leaned f 
too far forward as she was getting to the jump because I think she was anticipating it sooner. Uh And it sent her into the back of the landing ramp. So about 25, 30 feet across, you know, going, I don't know, 30 miles an hour or so. And then she slammed into the back of the ramp and then she had to fall another 18, 20 feet. Shit. Yeah, God. So (laughs) just full, you know, ping pong, just boom, and then onto the ground. I mean, it was heavy. It was was really traumatic. The whole whole birdhouse team was there because we were shooting for that uh, war rig thing. And, um, you know, we we covered the entire thing uh, from her perspective on our show. And uh, it's... It's it's like top three heaviest things I've ever seen on a skateboard. Like right in up terms there. Of yeah, I mean Jake Brown. With Jake Brown. He, it, it, he got Jake and then Lizzie, and and I don't know which one is is gnarly at this sound, point. It sounds like Lizzie's was more consequential. I mean, like like Jake's was magnificent. Like he came from like forty feet in the air, and like his shoes came off, and yeah. but I don't know that he had quite the like the hardware put in. Yeah, I don't it. really. I don't. <laughs> it's it's all subjective. I don't want to compare too much. <laughs> I don't, yeah, uh, it, right. but it it was it was really crazy, and and it just it also is a testament to her dedication and perseverance that she could come back from that because right you know it, it's the kind of crash that it definitely could end a career if not worse right and she's skating and she just she just learned no complies up a step up like nice. i know that seems minor but when you see what happened to her you won't believe that she's back learning tricks yeah dude and it, then and i just realized too that the, the another like hugely prominent female skateboarder this this very young girl sky brown you were <clears throat> she had a she had a bad crash too terrible yeah. crash. So, i know uh, that one i wasn't around for that one in fact uh, even though it was at your warehouse so it, it was yeah were. and <laughs> unfortunately it was a it was a trick that i think i would have discouraged her from uh-huh if i had seen her right. trying it you know what i mean like there's there's a part of me that i saw i was like oh man i would have told her that not Dude, that's so. That. It's so interesting. I never thought that I, that this would be sort of the, you know, where our conversation went. But did you see the documentary called The Crash Reel? Yes. And I, I feel Kevin like Kevin Pierce. Kevin yeah, Pierce. Kevin yeah. Pierce. He was a, a pro snowboarder. He lives and, locally and, uh, here now too, right? Yeah. And, great. I, he's a great guy. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. Yeah. But you know, not to get into the into like the the details of that documentary but i just bring it up because it's such an indictment of action sports where you've got all these athletes and and they just have so much pressure on them to keep pushing further and further like like go higher and higher and like do more and more dangerous stuff i i agree with you in that the world we live in and and there's a lot of pressure on everyone to perform and whatnot but but i also know that in the heart of everyone especially the the people who are who are successful you can't stop them right and i know that because i am that guy that you couldn't stop right you know and i did stuff that were beyond what i what risks i should have been taking at the time but you know it's like matt hoffman yeah there's a party that wants to like oh don't Mm-hmm. Right. Don't do it, Matt. And he's like, you can't. Didn't you it's go? In his blood. Didn't you make it like until you were filming like a commercial for The Gap in like the 2000s or something without breaking a bone? What can I say? I know a lot about Tony Hawk. And I love the guy. And I also love this time of year, man. Spring is just time to get outdoors and enjoy your friends. There's no better way to do that than around a big old campfire. That's why I'm so excited about my new toy, my fire pit from Solo Stove. This thing lives in the cargo box on my RV at all times. I have pulled it out no less than twice a week ever since I got it. I'm like addicted to the thing. I set it up outside our warehouse. We saw up our pallets for firewood, which is great because we have so many pallets we're going through and they'd be piling up if we weren't burning them. And we'd get in our little chairs, we'd get around the fire. We just always have a great time, man. This thing's so solidly constructed and it's got its own little ventilation thing, which makes it like virtually smokeless. You don't stink like the fire in your clothes or anything. And then just when it's done, you know, like you dump out the ashes and stick it back in the box. I love this thing. And I want you to give it a shot. And not only if you use the promo code STEVO at checkout when you go to solostove.com to buy one, 
if you use the promo code Steve, you get a free stand with your fire pit. And that way you can set it on the stand and not damage a wooden deck that you might be on or, or whatever on the ground. It's a good call and it's a good deal. So I want you to go to solostove.com, use the promo code Stevo at checkout. That gets you the free stand and hurry up while it's this time of year. You can get around that fire with your friends and just have a great time. You're going to thank me for it. So hurry up and go do that right now. And let's hear about Tony breaking his first bone. Yeah, 98. <laughs> really? 98. Yeah. Broke, broke my elbow on a Gap commercial. After how many years of not breaking anything? Well, I mean, he's been pro professional since the 20, 70s. 20 right? years, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I had plenty of injury. It's, yeah. You know, I, I know that, that the, the whole idea is like, how many bones have you broken? Right. I'm like, well, I had two knee surgeries <laughs> and like at least 10 concussions up to that point and you know fractured this and that and bent whatever but um but yeah but it was i knew it right when i hit right like i i did a i did a um weddle backside 180 over this fun box i mean i could tell you the story it's pretty funny because sure it was at a time it was 98 so i wasn't really making money and i got i got a gap commercial i was like dude you know this is awesome and you know you get whatever rate you'd get for the day and and the idea that you're going to get royalties going forward like residuals from the commercial that was the whole thing is just like right this could be my income for the next six months so luckily we shot vert they had a vert ramp there we shot the vert stuff before we got into this other thing and so they got their vert footage and then we were going over this launch box and that that was the big thing back then right it was like x games type of stuff you know, launch, launch yeah. kicker, launch box, and then flat on the top, and then a wedge ramp down. Like that was the thing. BMX, rollerblading, skateboarding, and so I went over it, and then I was just like, I gotta give him something more. So <laughs> I decided I'm gonna do a, a, a backside 180, you know, well grab, and like a Japan, and they're like, all right, action! I did it and I landed it, like barely cleared it, and they're like, ah, we didn't move the camera fast enough. Can you do that one again? And I just knew when they said that, I was like, I don't know if I can do that again. <laughs> was Jeff Tremaine the director? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so then I, I drop in, do it, commit to it. I knew I didn't have enough speed and, you know, did the deck check thing where like two wheels land on the flat, two uh, wheels, and, yeah. and my body was committed to going down. So I basically ejected to the ground. And, uh. you know, that was like, I don't know, eight feet or something but landed on my elbow and thought that I, I don't know, I thought I bruised my rib or my lung or something. And then as soon as I came up, I could just see this thing like moving the wrong way on my uh, elbow. Yeah. And immediately I, I felt nauseous. And I knew right then I was like, I broke it. Man. And I was just like, dude, of all the times when I would <laughs> really actually need the money, it's I crazy. Broke my, uh, Did they pay you extra because you broke something for a Gap commercial or no? Well, that's the that was the the weird part about it is that I went to the hospital, um, and the doctor told me he's like, "Nah, you didn't break it. You just, you're fine." I'm just like, "This thing's like moving <laughs> around. It's pretty Chicken obvious." Wing yeah. Out. And then he comes back after the X-ray. He's like, "Oh, I didn't. I stand corrected. You broke it." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool. <laughs> and uh, so because I got hurt during the shoot. I was, uh, they put me on, um, on uh, workman's comp. So they said, you know, you'll get money every week that you're not working. And I said, well, I, I do have sponsors. I do get paid. And they said, yeah, but if you're not working in commercials. I was like, well, I rarely work in commercials anyway. <laughs> like, I'm trying to dispute the fact that they're trying to pay me workman's comp. Yeah. I just felt weird. And they're like, well, you know, how if you were to do commercials, how much would you make? And I said, well, as much as this one, I guess. And I said, okay, well, then you get uh, $500 a month. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's crazy to me to hear you say that in 1998, you weren't making money. Like, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was scraping by. Right, right, you right. Know, it was more like the years prior to that. I was, it was, it was. I was hurting. Like I had to, I had to downsize and sell a house, and I had to. Yeah, and, and it makes sense to me. I mean, I know that like throughout the '80s, it was like 
this crazy skateboarding boom, and then the '90s kind of got quiet, especially for vert skaters. Yeah, yeah. The, I say '92 to '96 were the like the most struggle in terms of right. trying to make it as a skater, uh, trying to support a family. Uh, right. You know, and and just but but at some point it was just like, all right, this is what we gotta do. You know, I'm eating Top Ramen. <laughs> I'm eating Taco Bell. I was and skating a birdhouse skateboard in '94, a Jeremy Klein. That's that's how I afforded Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, dude, oh, dude, oh, wait, hold dude, on, hold dude, on. hold on, dude. The actual birdhouse board. Okay, because I always want to like uh, have some indication on the top of the board what the tail and what the nose is. Oh yeah. So dude, that board, that Jeremy Klein, I I uh, took the panel from a Taco Bell, a Mexican pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, yeah, and I taped it across the board, like, uh, and then laid the grip tape. So it was just, so it looked like it was a professional Taco Bell skateboard. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's How full it. circle it's is full that? Circle. Yeah, and that was the one that I did, uh, like the cleanest 360 double flip, like you know, skating on flat ground. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, but, so, uh, but the uh, the other thing about that is, um, so I, I actually had this conversation <laughs> with Spike not that long ago. In case you're wondering, the Spike that Tony is referring to is the Academy Award-winning movie director. Wonder what they were talking about, but. I don't wonder what I'm going to tell you right now, which is that I am very comfortable sitting in my seat because my butthole is clean as a whistle. Why? Because I've got my bidet from Hello Tushy fixed to just about every toilet I regularly use. And I love this product, man. I won't shut up about it. If you heard me on Two Bears, One Cave, the big, huge podcast that just came out a few days ago, I couldn't shut up about it on there. I love this product. Why? It's great for the environment. You're not throwing away all kinds of toilet paper because when you get done taking a big sloppy dump, you just twist the little knob, which is fixed to your toilet once it's set up, and you get this refreshing blast of water right onto your butthole. It's like washing your asshole with a pressure cleaner. It's the greatest invention ever. And when you get done blasting it, then you just take a little tiny bit of toilet paper just to dry it off. And for that satisfaction of looking at that toilet paper and seeing that there is no poop on it because your butthole is so clean. Man, I can't recommend this product enough. And I really, really think if you haven't tried it yet that you are missing out in a big way, but don't worry because I got a great deal deal for you. If you go to hellotushy.com slash stevo by using that special slash stevo at the end of hellotushy.com, you're going to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. Again, that's 10% off your order plus free shipping at hellotushy.com slash stevo. And not only will you thank me, but believe me, your butthole and your underwear will thank me. So get on over there and do that, and let's hear about Spike Jones. Uh, I remember if I got something, like I got, you know, a commercial, I was like, dude, I gotta, I'm gonna get, you know, 400 bucks for the day or whatever. I was like, we're going out, we're going to Olive Garden. <laughs> like, that, was, that was the celebration. That was the big, like, that was going out. Yeah. That was the really, you know, it was a nice restaurant, and I remember I had the same conversation with Spike. He's like, do you remember, like, going out Right. To an awesome dinner was Olive Garden. I was like, yes. Yeah. Macaroni grill. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you're an investor in your own restaurants. And so that's the celebration. Yeah, that's wild. Well. Um, but uh, to, to answer your question, I mean, to, to finish that story, uh, when I was getting money, no, no, I, I take it back. I was getting like $400 or $500 a week, not a month, on workman's comp. So I'm making more money because I'm hurt. Right. It was just a weird thing. I felt really strange about it. And but it was definitely helping. Like you know, I could, I could pay my mortgage, and yeah. I was able to survive. And, and I was still trying to heal. And when I and then um, they said, well, you just let us know when you're working again, like in a commercial. Yeah. And then I got a call from AT and T, on the East Coast <laughs> when everything you know when it was all splintered. He said, oh, we want you to do a commercial for um, AT and T because we have this new credit card or something. And I was like cool can you could you just jump could you jump through a, a wall of glitter onto a crash pad and I was like I can do that with my elbow yes absolutely and so then I had to call the workman's comp company and say I'm working again <laughs> 
fuck. <clears throat> That's great. Well, what's crazy was that you the, the more four hundred dollars a week paid your mortgage. Now that wouldn't even come anywhere near a mortgage. Oh yeah, yeah. I think my mortgage was about twelve hundred a month. It's yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was, so but, but it, that's the other thing, you know. Like, we were all just doing it because it, it, it whatever you could do to not get a real job. Right. Mm -hmm. So having experienced like the boom and then you know like the the peaks and valleys, is that I wonder because I look at how hard you hustle. And I'm just always like impressed and and almost confused. I feel like <laughs> why does Tony why is Tony Hawk hustle so hard? And uh, I, I suppose maybe that that helps to explain it, or is that just kind of built into you? Um, I, I I definitely got into that cycle, and it's hard to break. Yeah. But also, there's part of me that is like strike while it's hot. Yeah. yeah. This, you know what? This is crazy. The opportunities I'm getting right now are it, just unreal. Like, they're dreamy. Dude, I, like, I just saw your Mercedes. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've seen, I've seen you, like, <laughs> you know, team up with so many, like, cool sponsorships. And I just get jealous. I'm like, <laughs> like, who gets... I even sent an email to, to someone on your team, like, who gets... Tony, all of these cool deals, and like, can I talk to that person? I'll tell you. They said it was uh, your manager, a lady named Sheila. Is that right? Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> how that came about. So I, I, I think it's because, especially right now, like I've done, I've done four pretty big shoots in the last month, um, which was, you know, a couple of, even years ago, three or four years ago, didn't happen, even right. once a year, um, but. Uh, I think it's because I was able to stay productive through COVID, uh huh. You know, and kind of be out there, whatever, how in whatever mm -hmm. form, skating and and you know, <clears throat> making things work, doing live streams, doing your show, stuff like yeah. that. And when things started to come back around, as we started emerging from all this chaos, uh, people were just like, "Oh, that guy, he's he's doing stuff like you right." Know. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I mean it's it, it's it's crazy, and 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 dude, have we gone this far and not mentioned what we, you and I did during COVID, when we did the double wall ride, and uh, dude, we, that was still <laughs> such a runaway success. Yeah, yeah how many I you cannot guys believe we, we ended did, up selling. Dude, like, like it was so <laughs> we we would. Tony does this thing. He's like, you know, uh, gets this amazing picture doing a full, uh, a full pipe loop. Yeah. A and and he sells. I saw it. Like I bought one. I was so stoked on it. It's in my house. And uh, it was to raise money for COVID. And it's like fifty percent for COVID, fifty percent for the skate park project. I think. Um. So. Yeah. And I think on that one we were doing, uh, we were trying to help the fires in Australia. Right. Too. Uh -huh, okay. Um. But it was all for charity. And, and 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 I loved it, and then I, that motivated me to uh, get behind. Because dude, when the when the pandemic hit, it was like, you know, miles and miles of lines of cars and people waiting to get food. And I'm just like, people can't eat, dude. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get behind a food bank, and I just straight stole Tony's idea. You know, like <laughs> I just sold sign prints to raise money for a food bank, and then. Uh, and then I, I reached out to, to you. I was like, yo, man, I stole your idea. It went great. And you were like, let's do a doubles photo. We'll do a double wall ride. And I mean, it I, just... Well, that came from you trying to recreate your wall ride as a kid. Right, 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 right. And you came, you brought a, you brought right. two ramps to my office. That was with Andy Roy. And right, yeah, yeah. Put them I know, the and I just ate shit. And got broke mm -hmm. off. Yeah, I know. I, did, like my <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it was like, how... How hard could you possibly slam on this? <laughs> Not that hard. <laughs> Steve O proved everyone wrong. Yeah. Right. And so then, so uh -huh. then, so then that was the sort of the, the, what gave you the idea to say, let's do a double wall ride, which was just completely reckless. Well, your, I was like, I was like, that's your redemption. Let's figure <laughs> right. out how we both can do it. <laughs> right. And, I mean, and now yeah. I'm such a liability in that situation, but we, <laughs> we got this epic photo. And, and I remember thinking, okay, like I've sold sign prints, Tony's sold sign prints, probably everybody who wants our signature has one, you know? Now we're like going back to the well and like here, here, you know, here we go. It, probably no one's gonna want it. I remember thinking like- I felt the same way. And like, I mean, I was like, yeah, really- 20, We should do 2,500, ah, 2,000, you know. And, that. and, uh, and 
so that we, we put them on sale and I'm like, I remember ner- I was nervously checking the app to see how many sales yeah. there were. It had been up for like 20 minutes and it was, and, and the app said we had raised like $20,000. I thought I was like reading it wrong. I was like, oh man, only 20 bucks. Like, wait, what? I couldn't even fathom how much money was coming in. And it was a hundred percent of it for charities. I'm just like, oh my God, here we're, and I'm thinking like, why, did, when it's 100% of it for charity, is that the one thing? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The one thing that I can sell. You yeah. Know? But, but dude, but it's, I was so happy, man. I was so I le- happy. Well, I learned a lot from that too. And, and I learned that, especially with those things, you got to have the story behind it. Yeah. And, and the way you present it is important. Right. And the video you guys made of us figuring that out and why we did it. Right, and was, plus the, was really the, the central to why it was successful, I think. I think even more so that the video really chronicled like our history going back like yeah. for, for literally decades now, which is crazy. And uh, that got, got people a little bit invested in it. I, so I remember this vivid moment when you were like, let's just go, let's just keep signing. Right. And I said, Cool. Yeah, let's do it. You know, this is amazing. I, I because we didn't even have a number. Like we didn't we have did, a number. Yeah. Where, where, I think we had. I don't know how many we had signed, but we got to a point where we were selling more than we had signed, and and we and we checked in. It was like, all right, let's just fucking keep selling them. We'll just keep signing. So we're on this like, just frantic, fucking crazy. Like just, it took over our lives for like the next like oh. week or two. And, and, and we had three, like three, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah. We weren't even living. We weren't even down here, so we were driving from LA. Right, you know, right. Back, yeah. So you guys were, were dry, So he would sign, uh-huh. whatever. Right. A couple thousand. And then your guy would meet you, us there, or vice yeah, versa. Or you guys would bring him down. Right. Uh-huh. I would get him. I'd frantically start doing it. Then someone drives into Riverside to get him <laughs> yeah. uh, right. to get him shipped uh-huh. out. It was, but it was it was nonstop for yeah. a few weeks. But I do remember this one moment because you're like, dude, they just keep selling, they just keep selling, and right. And then at some point, it got to a point where it was like. Oh, like we'll get to a million. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> and you came, and you're like, we sold. We were up to, up to like eleven or twelve thousand. Yeah. Right. The, at the number of right. Of, and and so you came to my house with this giant box, and I and I was thinking like, man, we're we're getting there. And I said, so how many is that? Like ten thousand? You go, this is six. <laughs> Like right. once you sign this giant right. box right here, 6, right. we're halfway there. Right. And that's it, when we both looked at each other and we're like, we, we, can, we yeah. can't keep doing and, it. And I had only put that video on YouTube. I had not put it on my Facebook or my Instagram. So like we, we really could have sold way more and we just got burned out on it. But then now here we are, we got back together, the triumphant return of Tony Hawk to the <laughs> Wild Ride podcast and we're putting them back on sale. I'll have said that in the intro to this, but uh, but yeah, like we're, like we're gonna fucking raise more money. And again, 100% for charity. Thank yeah, you, I, I still get people reaching out to me like, hey, when can I get those available again? So everybody asking. Yeah, it's, it's been much more pleasant to do that at my pace yeah. right <laughs> so yeah. at my own pace uh-huh. right uh so you know i just signed that box it was like a thousand or fifteen hundred but it was just more like when i have a right, extra right, 15 right, right. 20 minutes i'm gonna burn through these yeah. and i'm gonna go do my other stuff it doesn't take all the time away from my kids like it had. are you right. guys gonna have a limit of what you're gonna sell this time or are I, you gonna i think it makes sense go too. for the glory it's again. so crazy okay. because I'm, I'm right back in the place of thinking like i don't know man we already like i don't know how many we can sell <laughs> i mean come on dude i, mean, I, I don't know yeah but hey i, I appreciate uh, you, you spent so much time and effort doing that and when we finally did stop the sales the first time we were at four hundred eighty thousand. Well, right. I mean, technically, the app said we were over half a million. But what I didn't factor in was that there was a two point nine percent credit card fee. Like a shop charge. size swipe. Every time you right. swipe, they take so, a percentage. So, so, so th- this this glorious over half a million number just got chopped down to four hundred eighty thousand. And I remember saying, okay, wait, let me let me <laughs> chime in here. This guy, he wanted to present a check for half a million dollars so badly. <laughs> that he's like, I'll just, I'll just chip in the extra twenty grand, so that we can. I'm like, okay, so you're gonna devote all your time and effort to signing stuff yep. for our charity, and then it's gonna cost you twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, that's not acceptable. 
$480,000 is an amazing number to get to. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. The OCD would have cost you 20 grand, dude. I would have done it. I, I would have done it happily. And, and uh, Jesus, and, dude. Yeah, I'm psycho, you know. But, uh, dude. It's I love that video, though. I it, I love it. It's still an amazing video. Yeah, it was it was really, it was a fun project. And, and it was it was hard, man. That was like, that, yeah. It was not easy to figure out the timing and that the, the landing ramp was, that was not a, really steep. So it felt like you were coming down too flat and yeah. then flat again. Um, that was a gigantic frontside wall ride that you did, <laughs> and I was a liability well, it, underneath. <laughs> no, but it was gigantic, out of desperation, <laughs> right? To try to keep away from you. <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. The higher I go, the safer I am. Yeah. Yeah. No, when, it was. You were. You did it fine. You made it more than I did. All right, but I also like did it really small. I mean, whatever. Like it, 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 was, it. it was amazing. Yeah. It, it was amazing, and uh, we're back at it. We're we're raising more money for the tar the the skate park project skate park project thank you mm -hmm. yeah um, i'm i am so appreciative and everyone on the staff and that was our biggest fundraiser yeah well, rad. to date to date and dude yeah. like I, I cool i uh get i, I want to say i get such a kick out of it but it's more just like i i can't even believe it's like i'm bros with tony hawk and you know i mean it's probably it's like lame to say that, but like when, when I tell my bros, when I, my, my buddies from high school, I'm still in touch with all of them. We were like a little skate gang. And when I sent them the photo of me, you and I doing that wall ride, like my bros from high school, like I cannot put into like words the impact that that had. You know? It was like, oh my God. And one of them I got to introduce you to, my buddy Abdullah. He's oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just pretty cool, man. So, like, when you say you're appreciative, I'm thinking, like, man, like, I got to do that, you know? With, with yeah, fucking, it was, it I, was, I, I, got I still, it's, it's, I'm still blown away um, that we got to do it, that it resonated, <clears throat> and that we raised that much money. I mean, that was, mm -hmm. that was unreal. Yeah. And and then we celebrated by going to Surf Ranch, and you yeah. got barreled. <laughs> yep. You got barreled. Turns out Tony Hawk <laughs> and Steve-O's, like, chocolate and peanut butter, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, dude, um... I'm str I'm, I, I was on like this great program with my food. I was not eating flour or sugar like as a rule, and I got like. Okay. How much did you lose? I mean, I, I didn't even. I just, I just was healthy. You, you know? just wanted to look good. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't beat myself up over portion control. I just, just avoid flour and sugar, and you're good. And then I fell off. You know, you know when I when I had my relapse was at your dumb restaurant. Oh, is that a is that a plug for Urban Sea or is yeah. that like is that are we your dumb, your dumb <laughs> restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Make sure you go to this dumb restaurant, this amazing restaurant in Sanitas. Uh -huh. Yeah, by the way, it is completely amazing. The dessert and, uh, is so good, you will relapse if you're on yeah, any kind of diet. Dude, I True. had I had yes. made it. I had made it. I think like ten or eleven months, no flour, no sugar. I remember we were there with you guys, and I was and I held my my boundary and then i went back with my girl we had this nice little table in, on the patio the food was unbelievable and after the meal the, the the waiter comes over and says hey you know so we got this extra dessert like uh, some, somebody ordered an extra one or something but like you know i got that like it's not i'm just gonna leave it here it was a lava cake and oh, i and oh i took i took one bite of that lava cake and then my you know i'm an addict dude so now i'm just like in trouble with my weight dude like I, I, you wouldn't notice it unless i take my shirt off and then it's a, i'm a disaster dude and, and I, I don't i was curious have you ever had like where you're like just got out of control and put on a ton of weight um not a ton uh <clears throat> as i got older and slowed down i i could see that you know i don't look as fit as I used to. But you're always uh, skating, I'm sure, right? Uh, I'm trying to skate regularly. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and and that becomes more challenging too, just with kids and obligations and things like that. But but I but I do it's more like an effort now. It used mm -hmm. to be just be like, oh man, I'll go skate. Look good. And now it's like, okay, I, I like today. I know yeah. I have this window from three to five. Yeah. <laughs> gonna make it count. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna go skate. Like that's what's gonna happen. But um to answer your question, I used to not care. When I was right. like anything, I was just eating all the, in fact, people would be like, dude, how do you, how do you eat four meals a day? I'm just like, I have to. And right. I was just, you know, always on the go and, and my metabolism was fast. And then as I slowed down, I realized like, oh, there is an effect to all this. I would say that when I noticed it 
um, was through COVID, and I was drinking more than usual. Okay. You know, and to the point where I was just like, come on. <laughs> you know? Right. Because we were just so idle, and, and I'm sure it went, you know, whatever, I'm making, making excuses, but it seemed like a lot of people were going through that where yeah. they were just at home. And it was just mm -hmm. like, oh, have a glass of whiskey, right? I'll, I'll it, whiskey or wine? wine. I'd feel, I'd... Mostly whiskey. Whiskey. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love like, fine whiskey. Uh, yeah, at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that, but it was just more, you know, it was more like we'd be up watching something, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm like, oh, I'm falling asleep very yeah. quickly. I can't um, picture you being like that. Like, uh, I don't like get drinking sloppy. too much, like like turning into a darf or something. Like, <laughs> right. I, you know, I don't think that can ever happen. No, I but I do enjoy fine whiskey, so I, I'm going to leave that at that. And yeah, I still you and the like rock. Oh, another yeah. the rock drinks tequila, huh? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, but, but that was when I noticed, and that's when I was like, all right, you know, don't don't do this to excess. Right. And I felt like I was doing it to excess, and so that that's just keeping that in check. It takes discipline. For yeah. sure, but but uh, yeah, I, I, it's not like it's not like it used to be. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going, yeah. And desserts, let's go. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, grand I, slams for breakfast. Yes, I yeah, I got it. I got it. But but, but I'm I'm this, today's day five. I'm back off of sugar and flour. How do you avoid that? I mean, it's it's just kind of within reason, right? Like, you're not going to completely avoid sugar. But if like, sugar is, like, one of the top, like, th three or five ingredients, then, you know... Just you, probably no carbs. And, and, and no bread. Like Yeah, I've definitely cut back on bread. Yeah, can't have bread, man. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask you this, too. Have, have you ever had, on any level, like, a public feud? Like, what... Um, that's a good question. Uh, not not I can't, really. It's I mean, not something you picture. You can't picture anybody being like, "Man, <laughs> fuck Tony Hawk." <laughs> yeah, never. I, I've definitely, I've definitely stood up for myself, and you know, on social media, when getting. I remember when uh, they people gave you heat and stuff. People gave you heat over doing a Got Milk ad, and sure. I remember, I remember yeah. you standing up, uh, saying, "Like I drink milk, man. I don't understand." What's what the heat? That, right, but that wasn't like anything. Like, like. Oh, I did, but I did one. I did one last year through yeah. COVID. Did right. it again. Uh huh. And I, I put milk on my cornflakes this morning. So. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> right. You did the McTwist with, with the, the milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was on TMZ. It was amazing. What's so bad about drinking milk? I mean, some people. Animal people. <laughs> Animals, it's, yeah, it's, and it's the dairy industry, and you know there there's a there's mm. there is controversy, <clears throat> and, and, and right. I I respect people's opinions, but this is what I do. Like I'm not yeah. I'm not changing my values to get paid right by got milk, right. right. I drink milk, like <laughs> I, I I enjoy it. I like milk. Yeah, I like yeah. it, and I put it on my cereal, and sometimes in you know yeah, in I coffee, did. or I eat ice cream, and and I have my whole life. So right. it's, it, you know, you, you, I think the the issue is that people say like, oh, you're a sell. I was like, dude, this is what I've been doing. Right. I yeah. love that. I love that. But, but I bring this up because like the whole, has Tony Hawk ever had a feud? Because I had like a situation with somebody and I'm, and, and I was inclined to like be on my podcast and, and tell this story and complain about it and like, you know, and I actually did. I won't even say which podcast it was, but uh, I was doing my little evening meditation, and and it just I was I was thinking, man, like, am I gonna leave this this rant where I go off and tell this negative story in my part? And 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 what what made what made my decision? I was like, Tony Hawk would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I like, guess the closest thing to a a feud or any sort of thing like that would be, you know, this this whole nonsense of like I, I stole the 900 from Tus Papas oh, and I right, made okay. sure he was not in the X Games and all that is fabricated um, and, and, and you know what you I actually... stand by it but at the same time I don't want to I, I don't want to you know there's, there's, a, there's a point where it's just like you don't you, people are just going to believe what they believe right they want sometimes they want to believe right those things because they don't they don't want to believe that it could be really that spontaneous or special and and it, I just have to let that go, and that's fine. And and so you know, there's also the whole thing like you doth protest too much. Like if you're fighting it so hard, it just looks like you're right. You're guilty of this thing that you're being accused of. And I I know 
what happened. I I know right. it's true and real, and I, I didn't step yeah. on anyone's toes or steal something right. from someone or, or do these manipulations, and so I just have to accept that. But it is it is very, it's hard. It's hard to restrain yourself when you're just like, dude. Right. Was it hard to, re it, yeah, sorry. It's not real. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Was it hard to restrain yourself when Steve said that he was a better street skater than you? <laughs> it wasn't because, because if he's doing double through 60 foot on the flat, he was a better street skater. <laughs> Soft protest. He was like, yeah, you probably are. But dude, I wasn't even, man. I, I did. That was, I, so, you know, going back to that whole story when he was on his <laughs> rad email list and, and I chose to be off the rad email list, which I probably shouldn't have done like i i guess i replied all like i'm out i don't have time because he, asshole, he, asked, he asked this email list is too big who wants out uh, so i can add more people in i was like i don't have time to read them it was a test right he wanted to see who yeah. was like, <laughs> fucking done forever right. dude. so then he went off on this rant like fuck you tony hog yeah i'm a better street skater than you anyway back and i was just, and i read it and i thought hey he probably was <laughs> yeah. does Tony. anybody want out I mean, if somebody's out and they just get blasted How dare dude. You. oh no they no i got blasted but not but he i was not included in the blast email oh so other people were sending it no, to I, me i was I'm, I'm pretty sure i sent it to you i kept you on to blast you <laughs> like, you didn't dude, bring in someone new you were never even that rad <laughs> you still have those emails i think i, I asked mean, you before i would love to read them you, you know what i i believe that they're archived on the internet by someone just completely random i remember i i had <laughs> i had some communication with uh baba Bui, gary de la Bate, yeah, yeah and right then because they wanted me to be on the uh the wrap-up show yeah and uh i said i said dude are you on the sivo thing he's like <laughs> yeah man you can just feel the drugs when you read it <laughs> <laughs> Right. Jesus. Right. I know, man. When when's the last time that you were on the Stern show? Uh, I, I've only I've, I've never been on the show itself. I was on the, the wrap up show, yeah, uh -huh. uh, a couple times. I mean, I'm a big fan, so I, you know, when I'm on the wrap up show, I, I can hold yeah. my own in terms of knowing the sh what's going on with the show and the dynamics. Who's your favorite uh, whack pack? Oh man, that's hard. Wow. You know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I did yeah, love yeah. Eric, but Eric, like, I can't remember. He said something about me, and he, he's like, I, Tony hit his head one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, at least he knows who I am. That's so funny. Yeah. Eric uh, the actor. Yeah. yeah. I like Eric the actor. Uh, you know what? Eric the actor was, he was the best. He yeah. was. He, like, it's, like, it's like Howard said. He, he would just. He would just fight to the death, like, <laughs> yeah. on whatever it was, and hold his ground, mm -hmm. and, you yeah. know, and that's amazing. So, yeah, for sure. Eric but yeah, um, uh, I do love Wendy, because did you see it here when Wendy was the judge on the, they had some kerfuffle, and, and Wendy had to be the judge on whether... Oh, uh, right, whether someone was loud pitch, in the wag pack. Yeah, high pitch was, like, yeah. and, and, and she was awesome. And yeah. I was like, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I right on, man. What uh, what, what other stuff can we let people know about? There, there's a the get on the the Hawk versus Wolf podcast. That's yeah, crucial. that's coming. Uh, first show will be May 24th, and then um, uh, where can they where can they June hear that? 15th. Uh, I'll, wherever Everywhere. podcasts are. Yeah, we'll 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 be out there. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll make it happen. Um, Sam Jones is actually working on a documentary about my life. Nice. Kind of wrapping up the interviews now, so that's been interesting cathartic weird uh -huh. okay I, I was never i don't know it wasn't like i was ever trying to do that you know what i mean like who who wants my life story it was just he he brought me the idea and i trust his work and his uh his sensibilities and i was like yeah you're the guy i'm sure. shocked that there hasn't already been like a definitive tony hawk documentary there was one in the early 2000s that was like a, more of an espn piece Right, um, but this one is is way deeper, and the footage that he's uncovered is unreal. Dude, you're so good at social media oh, with thank all you. that, like always digging up the, the all this great. So old a lot stuff. of a lot of the stuff that I've put out in the last couple months 
has been because of what he's been uncovering. Uh -huh. And cool. he'll send me a link like, dude, look yeah, at this I, contest. And the cool sick. thing about Sam, I don't know if people know, Sam Jones is a prolific photographer. He did the documentary about Wilco. Um, Wilco. The band. Uh, okay. Uh, there's people listening like, yeah, dude, I heard. It's really good. It's, it's very good. And um, he said, uh, check this out. I found myself in the crowd at this Upland contest. Like, he's a hardcore skater. Oh, shit. Wow. Nice. That's Upl cool. Upland. <laughs> okay. He was, so he was a Whittier local. Like, he skated, I mean, you know, for skaters, that's that's a very small population. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, dude. Uh, so so when's that coming out? Uh, I don't know. We're <laughs> just telling you what's in the works. You said what's in the works, that's All what's right, in the works. All right, right, well, okay. Good, man. What do you got going on here, Ah, dude, it's at 11. I got to pitch a TV show. Oh, I shit. Got, okay. Got, well, should we wrap it up real quick? Are let's, we wrapped let, up? Let, let's wrap it up real quick. I'm, I'm kind of dying to be like, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, want you want to get them on Zoom right now? Well, I mean, I need to get on Zoom. Uh, Is that, are you overlapping right now? I, I do. Yeah, what's I'm, going I'm, on here? I'm wow, look at this. We're in the podcast, and he's yeah. getting on a Zoom pitch. <laughs> How's that timing? This see? is next level, dude. You're yeah. like... I know, dude. You're all biz. Yeah. You talk about the hustle. <laughs> I, I I can hustle a little bit. Yeah, I'm going dude. to the chiropractor from here. You're hustling. <laughs> this is the hustle. <laughs> what, what's this for, Steve? Um, this, I what, guess we're done because uh, Steve's <laughs> on a Zoom call. Steve, hey, guys. Steve didn't even shoot this away. He just looked down at his phone and I was like, I thought he was going to show you a photo, but I guess wow. we're done here. Business meeting, man. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank, we're, we're thank cut. you, Tony Hawk. <laughs> I, I thank you for that surfboard. Yeah, don't man. let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, man. You're the best. <laughs> what can I say? Being friends with Tony Hawk, dude, it's crazy. I got to just try not to kiss his butt too much. But he's a hero. And if you want his autograph with my autograph on the same totally epic photo of us doing a double wall ride, like I said at the top of this episode, they are back on sale. And uh, I, I, I'm curious to see how long they last. Well, full disclosure, we signed uh, 1,300 of them. And we're going to sign more, but I think they're going to fly. And like they went on eBay for like 290 bucks or something. I think Tony said we're the new Supreme. In any case, if you want one, get one. And for sticking around to the end of the episode, you know I love you. Thank you so much.